Good morning. I hope you're all well and safe and sane at home. And those of you who are going out to work in key roles um, and supporting um, our local community and, and other communities, thank you. Um, we're all praying for you and please stay safe. Over the next few days, I'm going to be filling in for Simon on these daily encouragements. I can tell you that from my own experience last week of doing the Youth Reflection videos of preparing and filming and uploading them, that they're exhausting. Um, you have all the same adrenaline uh, that you would from teaching or preaching, but without the face-to-face -face response that you'd get from talking to someone, you know, there and then. It's a little bit like throwing a message out in space and just hoping that someone finds it. So it really is my pleasure uh, to give Simon a break, and I'm sure you'll all agree with me um, that his messages have really been a great source of encouragement to us all through the first few weeks of this crisis. Thank you and bless you, Simon. You are in all of our prayers as you lead our church through this difficult time. So when Simon asked me to do this week's encouragement, we thought it would be a good idea to have a theme to focus on. We as a church are no longer in panic mode. We're, we're slowly getting to grips with the ongoing nature of this situation. And rather than trying to put out fires as they spring up, we feel that we're able to plan ahead. So for the next few days, we will be thinking about and learning from our brothers and sisters in Christ around the world who, unlike us, isolation and suffering are not a new thing. Members of our persecuted church family will be hearing how they hold on to and share their hope and trust in Jesus through the worst of times. And in this, I hope we are able to appreciate what we have in the privilege of not having to hide who we put our hope in and being able to share openly with others. This is all in the light and acknowledgement that this is a rubbish time and I, I don't want to make anyone feel guilty about struggling with the situation we're in but I do think it can give us some fresh insight and sympathy for those who experience this daily, month by month, year by year. I would like us to come out of this with a newfound passion for praying and supporting the persecuted church, to remember them in our prayers, to campaign for their rights, to support those who, like us, are part of the body of Christ. The issues can seem distant to us, but we now get a sense of what it is like to feel distant from each other. It's a perfect time to remember that we, on our comfy little island, we're not a prosthetic limb, we are part of the body. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians, he says, uh, this is uh, Ephesians 4.16, Under his direction, the whole body is fitted together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. During this pandemic, we as a church as a community, as a nation, have managed to come together in a way I have never seen in my lifetime. The community pages are full of hope, full of inspiration, full of people being like Jesus to others. Let's learn from this experience. Like Simon said last week, it will be a very different world that we emerge into when this is all done. Let's make sure it's a better one. Let's make sure we continue to support and care for each other, to be hope in the heart of our community and to be hope in the heart of God's community around the world. I'm going to read some more from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, 1 to 6. And let's bear in mind when Paul writes this, he himself is a prisoner for his faith. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Be humble and gentle, be patient with each other, making allowances for each other's faults because of your love. Always keep yourself united in the Holy Spirit and bind yourself together with peace. We are all one body, we have the same spirit and we have all been called to the same glorious future. There is only one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and there is only one God and Father who is over us all and in us all and living through us all. So my encouragement to you all today 
is to thank God for the things he has blessed you with. With family and friends you can encourage and be encouraged by. For our homes and access to basic amenities. For a church, when this is all over, that we can openly worship and praise our God and Father who loves us in. To keep doing what you're doing. Supporting, caring, loving and praying for each other. And to remember our brothers and sisters in Christ who do not have these things. Let's pray. Lord, I pray for our church family and our local community. Keep us safe and well and trusting in you and your strength, knowing that you are the King of kings and Lord of lords. And I pray for your protection, for your people around the world who cannot openly praise you for fear of persecution. Help us to remember them, not as a distant issue, but as part of the body of Christ that we are all part of together. Amen. So tomorrow we'll think a bit more about how we can learn from the persecuted church. But for now, God bless. Have a great day. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye.